first I wanted to uh, congratulate you on the dancing this one. I think I think it's excellent. Thank you. I'm actually looking to get into salsa dancing myself. Right. And I thought seeing as I'm interviewing the salsa master, <laughs> can you teach me a few moves? I'm not about the moves in the salsa, it's about the fire in the heart. I think that's what I've learned. And rum. <laughs> a lot of rum. And I think you're, you know... Are you serious about getting into salsa? I am serious. It's actually, for similarly, I'm, there's, there's a couple of girls I'm looking to sort of impress. Oh. They're into salsa as well, so... Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, it would be amazing. It's, <laughs> uh, you know, they took me clubbing to a lot of salsa nights, and, and it, it, I was amazed by it. It was so different to... It's so different to what our culture is in terms of all the men stand to one side hammering WKD and then they get so pissed they can't really dance then. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that Latino culture is not like that. They're dancing straight away. And it's not about the drink, it's about the dancing and about the, the flirting and the cheekiness. And, you know, I watched this amazing clip on YouTube when I was watching a lot of salsa before I did the film, of two, I think they were probably in their 80s, an old man and an old woman from Havana. And in salsa, sometimes they dance with like a handkerchief. And the deal is that he's trying to flick her on the arse with the handkerchief. And it's meant to uh, symbolize him impregnating her. <laughs> and she's meant to move out of the way. And the whole dance is that. And watching those two old people doing that, they kind of did nothing. But you could never teach that. And, and, and that stayed with me, just the fact that less is more and take it easy and, you know, it was good. <laughs> uh, with your character, obviously, when he was young, he went through an experience which sort of, you know... It changed him. It changed him. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's um, sort of a 20-year gap between then and that. I felt um, when, when we meet up with the character, there's, I felt like the, the first instance when he was young is just one of many sort of incidents which sort of led him to where we meet up with him. Yeah. What backstory did you sort of give your character to fill, fill in that gap? What, the old man or, uh, like, no, I'm not an old man, I'm 41. But like <laughs> the, 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 the distance between yeah. when we see him and, yeah, I think he just, um, you know, I think he, I've, I've just said this kind of earlier, but it's that thing like on a train track where you change direction, you know, I think that incident m took him on a different path and, you know, I thought that he, he became a quiet man, you know, he became a, a shadow of the person he could have been had he continued upon that path. And it's only when he kind of has his, has his furnaces reignited by Julia that eventually now when we see him on the finale that that thing clicks back and he rejoins where he should have been, you know. I think he just, I think he literally just mumbled through 25 years and was afraid, you know, I can imagine that he would be afraid of, of, of men, of groups of men. I know that sounds a daft thing to say, but, you know, I, I, I think he wouldn't go out or he'd look away and he wouldn't catch your eye. That's kind of what, what it did to him, I think. Um, one of the one of my favourite scenes in the film is you have a dance off with Chris Hogan, yeah. which is hilarious. If you could have a dance off with anybody who you've worked with previously, yeah, who who would you pick? Maybe me and Simon should have a big dance off, you know, but every of every form of dancing. <laughs> that would be now. Who do you think is going to win then? Yeah. Simon <laughs> can dance. He's, he can dance a bit. Um, I'm going to say me. I've been trained by some of the best salsa dancers in the world. I think, I think I'd samba him into obscurity. <laughs> that I'd love to see. <laughs> that I would pay money to see. <laughs> now, um, obviously, with your character in this, he sort of he failed uh, when he was uh, doing something younger. That I yeah. So he's come back to it. Is there anything that you have failed in when when you were young that you'd like to maybe return to? Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think. As a younger man, I kind of I have this thing in me that if I'm not good at something immediately, I kind of turn my back on it and say, "Well, I tried and I wasn't good at it, and that's that." Um, but you know, I think persevering at something. Uh, I play a bit of golf and I'm rubbish at it, and I kind of think, mm, "Is it worth it?" But I think, well, if you just play more, you'd be better at it. You know, I did stand up. I did ten gigs when I was a younger man, when I was like 24, 25, and and six were really good. And six were uh, 12 gigs, that is. 
And six were terrible. I mean, terrible. Booed off, you know, attempted fist fights with businessmen, just awful. And I turned my back on it because I thought, I don't want to do it anymore. It, it, it affects me too much physically. And, you know, that's when I was first starting to hang out with Simon and he was a young stand-up. And that was something I thought of. If you had just persevered with it, you would have become better. You know, I think that's a kind of key to a lot of things. You, you're never just going to be amazing at something overnight. Even if you're naturally talented at it, you can always hone it and, and do better. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome.